What makes for a compelling character in fiction? A character whose story you want to hear, who you wish you could meet in real life, or would be afraid to meet in real life. The most fundamental advice that every writer needs to master, regardless of medium, comes from one of my favorite authors, Kurt Vonnegut. Here are three underappreciated tips for writing compelling characters in fiction. One, every character should want something, even if it is only a glass of water. At the heart of story is conflict, and conflict is born of desire. This is the core of Buddhism, yes, but also of storytelling. If you want to tell stories, then you must create tension in your writing. The quickest rule of thumb for creating tension is to define your character's desires. Every character involved in a story must have something at stake, must want something from the situation, must have a reason to be there. Why? Well, for one reason, because this makes your story complex in a way that is true to life. Everyone you meet in life wants something. The waiter pouring your coffee doesn't share your desire for coffee. So why write a story in which a waiter appears simply to fulfill the protagonist's desire for coffee? This kind of storytelling feels superficial and selfish because it is. When you introduce a character who wants nothing, you're introducing a caricature a two-dimensional device that is obviously being used for some purpose of the authors. Every character should be a three-dimensional human, so the reader can engage with them and become invested in them. How can we do this? First, make sure the character's desire is on the page, not just in your head, but expressed somehow in their actions, facial expressions, words, in the objects they hold, etc. Next, make their desire a tangible one, not merely revenge, but to sword fight with a six-fingered man. And make the desire a deep one, not superficial. So not merely to break up, but to break up in order to avoid the emotional trauma of being broken up with. In short, keep asking yourself questions. What does this character want? Why do they want it? How can I show them wanting it? And what gets in their way? It is by exploring that question what gets in the way of the character fulfilling their desire that you can tell a compelling human story. I've created a writing prompt as well as a few examples of how I might approach narrating a scene over on my Patreon page. It's all free to access for everyone, and I've also included links to great examples of character desire in TV and movies. Check all that out for more detail. Two, give the reader at least one character they can root for even if it is only rooting for them to get that drink of water. In other words, make the reader invested in the outcome of the story, invested in the character's situation. This is fundamental to storytelling. As readers, viewers, and listeners, superficial oddities might capture our attention, but they can't hold it for long. We need to care about that person's actions, their fate, not just look upon them as an object. Vonnegut's advice is even more specific. Give the reader not some thing, but some one to root for. Not a cause or a nation in a war, but a person invested in the cause or fighting in the war. He tells us too that we ought to avoid telling stories with only bad people. It is not enough to root against a bad person. We don't want to feel like the best outcome of a story is a failure of evil, but a triumph of good. This need not be so black and white as a superhero film, nor so clear-cut as a parable. Sometimes the good guy doesn't win, or wins at a great cost. Sometimes we find ourselves rooting for the criminal in spite of ourselves. But Vonnegut's advice is not prescriptive about the outcome of a story, or the morals. Rather, he's saying that as the story is being told, your reader must be able to root for at least one of its characters to succeed in fulfilling their desire. This will make it compelling and get your reader to read through to the end, whatever outcome you decide is fitting. Three, every sentence must do one of two things, reveal character or advance the action. Character and action are intertwined. The action is the character trying to get the object of their desire, and the reader is invested in that character's struggle. So every sentence should reveal character to make the reader more invested in them, or advance the action 
to remind the reader that this is in fact going somewhere. Details are essential here. If you, like me and so many other aspiring writers, enjoy finding the right expression for interesting details you observe, but struggle to make them come to life, it may be because those details, though interesting and well articulated, are not being used to advance action or reveal character. A character's home should not be a museum of interesting collectibles, but rather a shrine, each detail of which says something about the character who lives there. You may have heard of Chekhov's gun, the idea that if there's a loaded gun in a story, by the end, it has to go off. It's a similar idea. The object of the loaded gun should not be introduced in the story as a cool detail, but as a meaningful one that advances action. Of course, the details of the gun might reveal character too. Keep in mind that this advice does not tell you who has to make the gun go off or for what purpose. If you find yourself getting bored while rereading a piece you're working on, analyze each and every sentence. If any sentence fails to reveal character or advance action, cut it or rewrite it so that it does. You'll be amazed at how much richer and more compelling your story becomes. I want to keep this video short, but there's a fourth tip Vonnegut gives that I think is essential. He says, be a sadist. To read more about that and for more examples of what I talk about in this video, including some of my own original writing, check out my website or Patreon page. No need to support me financially, everything is free. The option to support me is there only if you have the means and find value in what I offer. Thanks for watching. If you want to read one of my favorite books, full of odd characters with strong desires, some of whom you can root for, and with every sentence revealing character or advancing action, patron your local library or used bookstore for a copy of Kurt Vonnegut's Breakfast of Champions.